Hey everyone, welcome back to Deep Dive. It's that special podcast with Crispina and I, Stephen. And today, we're talking about a, a certain type of mobility device. I, I know about PMD. Those were like the e-scooters you used to have. I remember yes. some time back, we had to ban them because they were yep. causing such a mess in our streets. That's right. But PMAs, that's new to me. It's a personal mobility aid. So the PMAs are used by elderly and people with medical conditions. Okay. Now, PMDs, though, are regulated. So you cannot be a non-UL2272 version of it. Or ah, so. okay. Do you remember It has to be registered, time? a certain yeah. type of battery right. that's uh, legally allowed. That's right. That's because of all the fires that were taking place, you yeah. know. So, uh, yeah, but, so, but essentially, that one anyone can use, a PMD. Yes. Yeah. Pretty much. But there's the, there's the, even a motorized luggage. Did you know about this? <laughs> I've seen those in the airport. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Does that classify under PMD? Will you ever be caught <laughs> sitting on a no, motorized luggage? No, not cool, man. Not luggage. cool. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So, so yeah, I live um, in Ishun. I see a lot of able-bodied people, sometimes with families in tow, sitting on these big vehicles and they are on the footpath. Yep. That means a, sh- just a shared footpath with people. Yeah. And sometimes it sounds a bit scary and yep. a bit dangerous. Yep. Uh, have you seen that? I have seen that. Yep. Whole families on it. And that's what we're going to talk about today because these these mobility devices are, are being used not, by, not only by those who need some support and assistance, but by able-bodied people as well. And as you mentioned, bringing their whole families on a bit of a jolly as well. Why is this happening? You know, what's going on? And, and why do a certain group of people tend to use them more than others? And, and yep. can we do anything about it? Can police do anything about it? Should we regulate it? These are the questions we have. Yeah. So with us to talk about this are Michael Kwan. He is founder and CEO of Project Elevate. Hi, mm. Michael. Hi. Hi. As you can see, Michael uses a PMA. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and Florence Chong, she's Hello. a member of the Active Mobility Advisory Panel, where she has been since 2015. Yes, that's okay, right. But her day job is... I'm an occupational therapist at Tandil Singh Hospital. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So... Let's jump right into it. And Florence, we'll start with you because you've been on the panel for several years now. Um, we kind of tried to summarize the whole PMD, PMA in, in a very short way. Did we get it right? What is the, the real intent here in terms of you know, these devices out and about? Um, the, the advisory panel, the role that it plays, maybe you can explain to people. The advisory panel actually was uh, created in uh, 2015 and the, the purpose is to actually encourage the active uh, mobility um, landscape in Singapore okay. to actually um, get um, people to be uh, car light and also to use more of these active mobility um, devices in a safe and considerate manner mm. okay. so that overall that we can make this a more gracious kind of uh, commuting. Yeah. And, and just for clarity, when you say active mobility devices, we're talking about what... Um Bicycles. A whole range, right? This is a yeah. whole range, actually. Yeah. So, they can range from like a mon- non-motorized devices such as like bicycles, mm-hmm. even like kick scooters, manual okay. kick scooters, and also even like um, manual wheelchairs yeah. to uh, motorized devices, e-scooters, yeah. mm. things like hoverboards. Oh, Yeah, okay. and uh, right to the the um, PMAs, which are motorized, like uh, uh, the wheelchair that Michael is uh, using yeah. now, yeah. Ah. as well as the um, mobility scooters. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so there's a huge um, range. So anything, pretty much anything that can help you get around. Is there some confusion? Because some people think that, okay, PMAs, mm. PMDs, everything is the same. Yeah. There might be some confusion, mm. but actually um, uh, the broad classification of whether they are actually uh, motorized or not right. uh, motorized. Okay. Yeah. So as long as there's a battery... And some kind of a motorized, you know, system that's... Uh, a driving control kind of thing. Uh, driving yeah. control. Um, okay, Michael, maybe you can weigh in a little bit. So you've been using a PME for how long? Uh, around 20 years. 20 okay. years? Yes. Before okay. that, I was using elbow crutches. But my knee got very weak and the doctor wanted me to stop walking outside. Mm. I still walk at home. Okay. Um, but walking outside when it comes to rain and things like that, I might actually hurt my knee if I fall. Um, the cartilage is very loose. So I that's see. why I switched to wheelchair. I uh, see. Motorized wheelchair. So, you know, you must have seen the huge difference now on the roads. Mm. Yeah. Yes, I do. Tell me what's the thing that like 
shocks you the most? I see it real. Well, one of the things is I see able body uh, do sit on this PMA and they do have a, this disabled sticker stick oh. on it okay. and say thing that they are disabled. But then after they reach a leaf, they miraculously could stand up and <laughs> go and deliver the food. Um, Miracles I, happen. Yeah. So I think uh, to me that is fine. But one thing I am really concerned about is the width of their chair. Mm. Sometimes at the pedestrian path, it's only that big. And yes. if I, like an opposite guy coming to me okay. on the other side, uh, we have to decide who's going to back up or who's going to get on the grass so that right. the other one can pass. Mm. So sometimes that uh, would not only inconvenient, there will also be some a little bit of aggressions as well. Yeah, like who gets to go first, right? Yeah. You know, who has the yeah. right And then I always hear the tsk sound uh, frequently. <laughs> Uh, as if I'm like I'm mm. the one that's blocking them. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. Have but you have you come into any like near collision accidents etc. Only at night, uh, when there are sometimes when they do have lights that is too bright, um, okay. and they are going really fast. So I really have to really slow down. Okay. When you say really fast, I would say it may be two times the person walking speed. And these devices are not meant to be going that fast, right? Yeah. For sure. Any, yeah, anything above 10 km per hour is already very fast. So if you hit somebody, they will fly, right? Yes. Yeah. I accidentally hit somebody once. Yeah. And oh. he got, that person got bruised. Ah. Basically, I was just doing a turn and she cut my pra- path. I see. I was like honing, but sometimes pedestrians, they wear all these earphones and they cannot yeah. hear me coming. That's and they right. just cut my path. So yeah, you've actually raised a few things. Maybe maybe we, we touch on the first one, the, the, that bit about whether able-bodied people should be allowed to use these PMAs. Mm. Because right now, there is no regulation saying that you have to be disabled to use one of these, right? Mm, yeah, right, you're right. You aren't required to register, right? No, no registration at okay. the moment. So, so, so by right, anyone can actually buy one of these and use them as they see fit right now? Uh, currently, it seems that way, yes. Okay. But there will be other uh, regulations that's uh, going to come at the end of next year yeah, right. that requires uh, PME users to be those that actually re- have um, mobility challenges. Mm. Right. And did yeah. that rule partly come about because of this, I guess what we might call abuse of... Uh, uh, yes, device. in a way, yes. AMAP actually did a review and uh, after consultation with um, through some focus groups um, with PMA users, okay. PATH users, seniors and all that. So this is one of the recommendations mm. that AMAP gave to the government. But, but yeah. just to play devil's advocate for a bit, because even though I may not be disabled, I do have young children, a family, and you know, three or four of us can fit on this PMA quite comfortably and it's great for bringing them to kindergarten, to school nearby, go and buy my lunch from the coffee shop. If I'm using it responsibly, why can't we allow it? The issue is that um, there may be, as, as we age, there will be more and more people who may require okay. the use of mm. PMAs because they have uh, genuine medical uh, needs. La. So in that way, if uh, we allow everyone to find it convenient to actually be able to use it, then the, there will be a lot of uh, loading and overcrowding mm. on our ah. public pathways and that will yes. bring about inconvenience and sometimes like what Michael alluded to, even aggression at times mm. and that's really going to get very unpleasant. And people like seniors and young children may find it very dangerous to be walking along such paths, uh, some of which are path sharing. Yeah. yeah, but you know, I was thinking about this, right? For this group of people, this device, in my mind anyway, saves money because one time they buy it off Carousel or TikTok shop or whatever, it's a, maybe $1,000 under 2000 No, No petrol, no tax. It's such an easy way for them. And also quite a lot of them do deliveries as well. Yeah. Yes. So it doubles up uh, as a means of affordable yeah. transport for a group of people. Um, do you think this will go away? Even if we say, okay, you know what? PMAs can only be used but for medical purposes and only, you know, six kilometers per hour, etc. Do you think this is a like something that we need to really look into. I think this is uh, quite an urgent issue actually because we have been Mm. hearing more feedback about uh, the misuse and abuse of the um, PMAs. So this is something that we need to um, tackle quite urgently. So there's a genuine need, like is what we're saying, right? So 
But it just means that instead of using PMAs, they will have to find Something other alternatives. Else, yes. I see PMAs as real PMAs. Um, not is because that disabled person is sitting on it. It's that the chair is really made for pe- disabled people. Mm. Chairs like mine is really narrowed and compact. And disabled people need to go into shopping malls, yeah. need to go into shops. We need to squeeze into narrow pathways. Even MRT stations, Yes, right? and, and we need, need to be able to turn in a very... Uh, turn on a dime, what I say. Okay. Mm. So, it's those big chairs that are super, super big that even I won't call them still PMAs, they are PMDs. And I see a lot of old people that sit on those micro chairs. And I think the government is also going the right way in controlling the dimension. Yeah. Uh, and, and that is also a good thing. Now, if able people just still want to use this mobility device, mm. then I think perhaps another way is that they go and look at PMDs that is already regulated. Mm. Right. Yeah. But that's too small for them to carry the entire time. <laughs> but, but I won't be surprised if you start seeing e-bikes that have, you know, then a side cart and a, a, a wagon behind, you know, <laughs> yeah, they, after they, a while. They do know how to work around. Yeah, I mean, maybe there might be other ways, like demarcated lanes for those kinds of users, different paths, infrastructure, which is... Or is that really too much? Like you have to focus, right, on who has the greatest need and how do we do it in the safest way possible. Mm. Yeah. And, and imagine if we gave suddenly created a path just for these PMAs, you know, then cyclists would be saying, we've been wanting a cycling lane for how long and now these guys get it? What's going on, you know? I, I'm a very active uh, outdoor user. I go out every very often. But the funny thing is that if I would say 10 PMAs go by, I'm the only one that is a really a disabled person. The ratio yeah. of a disabled person that is out there, I don't think we would need a, a, a dedicated path for ourselves. Okay, ah. yeah. okay. So, I see, I but see. even as the, the uh, population grey and get older, um, I think uh, these older people, they do just go from point to point and mm. not like actively like me running all over the, uh, the mm. island. Would it help to have only certain areas or designated lanes? Again, it's like the park connector. Yeah. Because most of the time you're going from your block to the supermarket, to the coffee shop. You generally are not getting on the MRT to travel to yeah. another yeah. area, right? There could be a lane dedicated to just allowing the PMAs. But then mm. again, it's back to the point of should everyone and anyone be able to access it. Yeah, this is a is a difficult issue to solve. In the interim, there are a couple of problems, right? The first one is fire, fire hazards. Mm. SCDF has reported in 2023, there were more fires involving assisted mobility devices. Yep. This is quite dangerous, especially when you live in corridors and they go into lifts and things like that. Is that something you guys worry about as well? Yes, we worry about these um people actually trying to modify their um, uh, uh, devices yeah. mm. and also like um, use like things like uh, incompatible like chargers or yeah. put on additional kind of batteries that may be incompatible and, mm. and that may actually cause um, fire hazards. Nah. No, but the thing is, it's so easy to get it. So EV cars are getting more popular now in Singapore. Do you know you can go onto any online platform, Shopee, Lazada and buy a car charger for like 200 bucks the kind that you literally no plug way. into your home wall wow. and plug into your car it is not safe it is not regulated and I've experimented this with one scary. before it gets really hot but Very the scary. point is that because the original one that you have to install would be, be about three thousand dollars, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So people think, well, two hundred bucks, three thousand, and you know, we're all cheapskates that way. Why are you right? looking for like a car battery? <laughs> oh no, no. I mean, because you know, I've had to charge an electric car. Is this car. for work or? Yeah. So same thing with all these mm-hmm. PMDs. The batteries are out there. Mm-hmm. The non-original versions are half the price. So it comes back to the point, right? Maybe Florence, you can weigh in. You, how do you regulate this? People are just going to buy all these cheap knock- knockoffs anyway. These places are decentralised. For the PMDs, the e-scooters as well as the um, what we call the e-bikes, mm. they, they actually have the standards. Mm. The UL2272 yeah. as yes. well as the EN15194 um, yeah. standards to actually comply with. So um, I think the advice is always for the users to go back to the original manufacturers to actually uh, or, or the shop where they get, uh, buy it from to actually get them to provide the batteries which are like original. How, how often do you yeah. get this uh, serviced? Oh, 
I just changed my battery recently. Mm. Okay, like that happens what? Yeah, uh, about a year and six months I have to change okay. it. Mm. But it's 2,500. Wow, just for the battery? Just for the battery. Okay. And searching on the internet, I can find $600. Ah, so, so that's why you have this problem, right? Yeah. Yes, but then this is an expensive chair and the $600 to put in an expensive chair is not worth it. And I'm sitting on it. I can't run away like yeah, normal Yeah, imagine if it suddenly yeah. catches fire yeah. while you're sitting on it, right? Yeah, be I, like... I can't stand up and run. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So you, do you think regulation will work? Do you think it's worked for PMDs? Um, Would you say it has? Because we regulated it and now they're definitely less. <laughs> for yes, sure, there's, there's less, less, right? less, less yes. fires too. Yeah, I mean, if there are less devices, then there'll be less fires. You right? see less of them, right? On the road. So. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, so, You see a lot less. So. so you think regulation will work or there will always be people who stick a disability sticker and try to get away <laughs> with it? Still will yeah. be. There, there still will be. Um, mm. And when talking about PMD, I still see in Woodlands there are those PMD that are not bicycle power chair. It's like a bicycle, but it's all fully powered. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. sometimes this school officer that. may stand there and try to catch, but sometimes they are too fast to catch anyway. So uh, there are, will always be people. Right. Yeah, I, and I think um, the to really weed it out totally is really very hard. Not possible. But really yeah. making it so much lesser would actually be a really good thing already. Yeah. Mm. Gradually over time, then there may be no more. You see, it's I, not uh, immediate results, but gradually over time. Essentially, if you say every time before someone wants to buy one of these devices, they have to show a letter which says, I need this kind of mobility device, that will naturally cut down the numbers. For disabled people like us, um, we all are SG enabled yep. registered and we all have those SG enabled cards. Mm -hmm. um, and instead of having a double regime, to go and register okay. again. The, having that SG enable card, you make it so much easier. In, if you ask me to go, I got this SG enable card, you want me to go and register my chair again? It's like the double work. Uh, and I have okay. to, why do I have to prove yeah. myself twice? Okay, yeah, so, so for, yeah. for the disabled folks, I can understand that. Mm. But I'm thinking for elderly, right? Yes. Let's say, you know, my mom, her leg is not doing too good, arthritis, etc. You know, for me to register her for using a device yeah. might be a bit onerous, right? In your experience, will there be occasions where people like that could use the support of a device like a PMA? Yeah. But don't need a disability kind of sticker. You that's know? Right. So that's, yeah. that's uh, I mean, disability card is one of the uh, uh, recommendations that, you know, AMAP has actually um, um uh, given to the government to recognize some kind mm -hmm. of existing yes. um, disability. However, for those that are, like you said, seniors, mm -hmm. so some of them may have, actually most of them ha will have undergone some kind of uh, assessment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So they will have been seeing some uh, doctors. Ah, and, uh, so the family doctor gives a note yeah. yes. to say that, okay, you can write this. That's yeah. right. So, like, like for your driving license, uh, after a certain age, you've got to go for your eyesight yeah, test yeah, and the yeah. doctor's going to say, this guy's still... So that's possible. You know. Yes, yeah. possible. And mm. some of them will have been assessed by the occupational therapist as well mm. before assessing the uh, some of yeah. these uh, subsidy schemes la, for it, it sounds devices. onerous, but actually, when I think about it, it's also, also good. It means that there's someone checking on you mm. to make sure that maybe you think I only just need a, a crutch, but actually you may need more and there could be something more serious. So, mm. Or the right. other way around, la, you are perfectly you know capable of walking you just don't want to walk you know yeah, then it's good then to make it difficult for you to get a PMA is a good thing because you should be walking yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. active but, SG you'd be you very know, happy funnily is my, my parents have two knee operation already yeah mm -hmm. and she it walks she walks a long time uh, a long way and she her knee will hurt but no matter how I plea uh, she won't even use a cane ah, or sit okay. on uh, uh, um, a PMA because yeah. that's pride in her. That's true. Right. They say, I'm not that old. So yeah, I, uh, I find it funny is that people like us that wish to walk, we can't. But mm. you can walk, you don't want to. <laughs> I was like, hmm. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. Can yeah, you give me your legs? Give me your legs, I give you my chair. <laughs> yeah, but in this case, I guess what we're concerned about is more that, you know, the PMAs are being used by a group and mm. perhaps used for some of the wrong purposes. I mean, it is convenient, but at the end of the day, those who really need it will then, you know, have some difficulty moving yeah. about because now there might be so many on, on our roads. But I see two things that 
I understand from their point of view why they want to use it. Mm. Number one is that it's really um, less energy intensive. You can go faster yeah. at, at, uh, at, at, at not using your own energy. And number two is that it starts to generate revenue for you mm, using correct. it. And yeah. instead of it's only a pure liability or it's a cost, it generates money right. for you. That also as a motivation, I can understand why they want to use that. Yeah. But perhaps, yeah, they can still earn money, but in a maybe in a better device. More not, regulated, maybe yes, less, yes. I don't know. Mm. Actually, the Dangerous. alternative is if you want to make deliveries and make money from it too, then just get an e-bike. I mean... If you don't need to bring your whole family with you, the only <laughs> advantage of having a PNA is that it can carry more people. Right? If you think about it. If I have to send my kid to kindergarten in the morning, mm. it's so much easier for me to do, do it yeah, on my Yeah, you can do it on a bicycle too. Mm. You can carry one person on a bike. So much effort to cycle. Oh, oh. Yeah, so right. that... that, 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 that no, 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 I'm, I'm just yeah. saying. Have you, have you ever tried an e-bike? It's... it's there's not much effort required. Yeah, you, know, you just <laughs> you turn pedal a few pedals and it start moving really in the zone. I really should try. It's mm. like yeah, it's yeah. you don't need but, a lot of. Uh, but you know what I mean, right? Once you're used to driving, yeah, hmm. you're like, ah oh, man, I don't want to take the MRT. I went on the MRT just a few days ago, and I was like, wow, this is nice. Oh. Welcome to uh, the general public. No, because it was. I realized it's cheaper than driving from. Uh, for that stretch, it was really convenient to take. A course, train. And it made total course. sense, right? Yeah, so, it's it's fabulous. It's yeah. easy now. Uh, okay, okay, so let's anyway. wrap up. Any 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 last uh, you know points you want to say, uh, Florence? Well, I just want to say that for um, device uh, users, please make sure that you charge um, safely. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Mm. Make sure that you check the batteries regularly. They are not bloated, corro- mm. corroded, or you know, having some powdery residue on them. So only go back to the um, manufacturers or the shops that yeah. sell you the, the device to have the parts replaced. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. That's really okay. important because you think you're saving a few bucks but in the long, uh, the greater scheme of things you actually will probably end up paying a lot more for it in other ways. Mm. Yeah, yes, that's, that's right. right. Okay. I would like to say that everybody are road users. Um, yeah, we are all uh, rushed for time but we all can still be nice and courteous. Mm. Uh, courtesy is cannot be regulated. As long as we are all nice, everything can work out. I can back off, you can back off or yeah. whatever. Mm. It's just there's no need for any unnice mm. things. Yeah. 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 What irritates me, people cycling, you can ring your bell, you know, it's like ding versus the ding, 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 ding. Yeah, then I oh. get a bit That's like the like, people like, who you know? keep pressing the button to cross the street, right? But you hear all those like booming, uh, thumping music coming <laughs> out. <laughs> and then you know <laughs> something is coming. And, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, okay. Um, yeah, okay, so yeah, yes. Steve, okay, will, will you ever ride a. PM. Who who knows? I mean, <laughs> we are an aging country. I'm getting old too. You know. Yeah. My thing is when I was talking to my team about this as well, and I think that, you know, that it, there will always be a demand for a certain group of people, mm. yes. uh, because cost is a really big factor for yes. them, uh, and I can understand what's motivating them to, you know, I don't know, circumvent all the rules to do mm. it lah. So I I do do hope that you know we will come to a scenario where we don't exclude anybody. Mm. Whoever needs kind of this kind of mobility device mm. is able to use them la, mm. together with cars, bicycles, you know, motorcycles, etc. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's my view. Okay. Yeah. Well, thanks so much for coming in and for sharing with us your thoughts on this. If you have any others, do drop us a note. We're always happy to hear from you. A shout out to the team behind the Deep Dive podcast. It's Junaini Johari, Tiffany Ang, Joanne Chan, Saya Win, and uh, To Yan Yun. And sound mixing is by Ken Delbridge. See you real soon. Bye. <laughs>